This is what a video measuring machine looks like. It's got an XY table right here that moves as I rotate these knobs in the X and the Y direction. And there's a part right there, that's what we're going to be measuring, and a light at the bottom that shines through the glass. And the shadow is cast and picked up by this camera up at the top, fed into this microchip here, and then fed into the software. And this is where we get the coordinates from. As I move these, there's measuring tape in there and a sensor, and it measures down to the micron of movement in the X and the Y direction. So this is what the software looks like. We have the XYZ readout here of coordinates from the machine. So as I move the table back and forth with my hand turning the knobs, the numbers will change. Right here we have an XY tridron to indicate the orientation that we're looking at. Uh, right here in the middle is the view. That's where we're going to see all the parts that we're measuring. And up here on the right is the feature stack. That's where the list of features that we've measured is going to populate. So the basic functionality of the software is measuring points, lines, and circles on a part. And then after we do that, we can do all kinds of mathematical operations to measure the part, such as distance between features, angle, and skew. So let's show what point is. We click the button point up here, and then this dialog pops up. We have a point counter right here that counts the number of points we've entered an auto feature, which I'll show off later, and an enter finish button. So as I move the table, it will change the coordinates on the display right there. And as soon as I click enter, it will record them to this point, and I click finish, and the point gets populated up here in the feature stack with the exact XYZ coordinates that it is. And right here on the view, you can see the point that we've created I can also change the units of the display from inches to millimeters, so it converts automatically as I click this button. Then we can also take a line, so I click the line dialog. I can move the table a little bit, click enter once, so we need two points for a line. And finish. So here's the line we've created. As you can see, we can move the view around, zoom in and out as we need to. And we have the XYZ coordinates of the center of the line. And then finally, we can take a circle, which requires three points. So I will do that. And there's the circle we've created in the view. It has the XYZ coordinates of the center of the circle right there. And then we also have a radius and a diameter measurement for the circle. So those are the basic features of the software. Um, but now let's actually measure something. So we're going to be measuring the part that I'm going to be showing on screen right now. Now let's take a look at how the software would actually be used. So as you can see, I've taken a rough outline of the part we're measuring right here in lines, and you can see the feature stack full of the lines I've measured. And we can see a live video feed now from the camera on top of the machine. Looking down at the part, the black silhouette is the part itself, and the lighter gray is the glass, the light shining through the glass. And this white crosshair on the front is what we use to take points, lines, and circles. So let's say we wanted to measure the length of the part, so how far it is from here to here. So what we need to do is click the distance button, and we can find the lines that we need to measure. So I click line 3, it highlights, and then we also want to click line 6. So we have those two lines selected and they are highlighted in the view and then we click finish and then a distance feature gets populated into the feature stack and a dotted line on the view right here. So the software has done the math. Here we have the XYZ coordinates of the center of the distance and then a 2D distance measurement which we can see is 38 millimeters across roughly or 1.5 inches across. So that's how long the part is.
Now let's go ahead and measure one of the circles on the inside of the part. So let's find one in here. Here's one. That's what it looks like all the way around. And I'm going to be showing off the auto enter feature, which makes it a lot easier to take points. So we click the circle button and we enable this auto feature right here. We click it once and there's a progress bar right here on the right. So you'll notice when I start moving, the progress bar starts to fill up. It takes about two seconds to fill up all the way, but as long as I move the part around, the timer gets reset constantly. And as soon as I stop, it starts to fill up again. So what I do is navigate the crosshair to the point that I want to take. I stop and it takes a point for me. And now it's waiting for me to move again. So as soon as I start moving again, the timer will restart. And I take another point right here on the circle. And then one last point right here. So you'll notice I don't have to manually reach over and click enter every time the software is doing it for me. Now that we have three points, I click finish. And there's the circle populated on the part right here that we just measured. We have the XYZ of the center and the radius, which is roughly three millimeters across or the diameter is 6.2 millimeters. Let's go ahead and measure another one, a larger one. And there's the larger circle that we just measured. Now we can take a distance between these two circles to see how far apart their centers are. So I would click distance. I select the two circles that we want to measure the distance from and I click finish. And there another distance feature gets populated and we can see that the circles are 20.3 millimeters apart from center to center. We can also do distances between any combination of features, so points, lines, and circles. So let's say we want to find the distance between circle one and line five. We can do that as well. Another feature is the skew feature, which comes in handy if the part isn't perfectly level. Horizontally right here, we can tell that the part is a little bit skewed and looking right here, compared to the white crosshair going horizontally, the part isn't perfectly level to that. So if we want to fix that, I'm going to move the view a little bit so you can see the try drawn here. We click the skew feature and we select the line that we want to skew the part to. So let's go with line three. It's a long and flat line right here. And if you watch the try drawn right here, as soon as I click finish, both the part rotate to be flat and the orientation of the try drawn rotate to show that we have rotated the part. This helps with measuring angles correctly and such for part measurements. There's a lot of complicated uh, linear algebra that goes into rotating the part. And then we can also unskew. So if we hit unskew, everything goes back to the way it was. So let's go ahead and skew that one more time. And the last thing I'll show off is the angle feature. So we can measure the angle between any two lines. So we click angle, and let's say we want to measure these two lines here. So lines four and five, those two are selected and highlighted. And then we click finish. You can see the angle feature gets populated here. And we have a 134 degree angle on the interior and a 45 degree on the exterior up to the 180 line right here. And we can also delete features as we please. So let's say I want to delete circle two. I just come up here, click circle two, and it's removed from both the feature stack and the feature up here in case any mistakes are made during measurement. Another feature we have for the purpose of quality control is exporting data to Excel. So all these uh, features that we have, any measurements, distances, angles, all the data of the XYZ coordinates get exported into Excel. So if I click this export button, 
the all this data gets written to an Excel file, which we can go ahead and take a look at. And here we have the Excel file that we've been writing to. We have all the features that we've measured, including distances and angles, and the X, Y, Z coordinates of all of those. So that's helpful for quality control purposes. You can record every part that you measure and compare all of them.